Hello, this is a Beckstein Model M Grand Piano, made in 1964, 180 centimetres long, that's 5 foot 10 and a half inches long, same length as the Steinway Model O, and certainly the same quality. I'm just going to have a look at it around, and this video is not only to appreciate this piano and assess what work needs doing on it, but also trying to use it as a guide if you're wanting to sell us a piano, uh, the kind of things we'd like to, to, like to know. So obviously the outside case is something you can look at straight away. Uh, you might have noticed I've shined up a couple of the um, letters here because I wasn't sure if they would shine up. I don't think the piano has been cleaned or uh, worked on very much since it was made and certainly this hasn't been shined up. Um, so by, by work time, I think, but in both technically and cosmetically. So uh, let's, let's have a look at the cosmetics first. And the key tops actually a, a two-piece ivory, which is a bit unusual, I think, for 1964. And very often one-piece ivory or or just um, plastic. Um, so that's that's encouraging because they're all in perfect condition as well. Um, so if you're assessing a piano or sending us an assessment, then please look at the keys, see how yellow they are. You can see these are ivory because you can see the little line there between the the sharp the where, where the sharps start here the little line between front and back is very indistinct on this one but you can see a different color here uh, there's definitely two piece ivory um, nowadays we don't always used to say ivory was really good but it's very often difficult to export if you have ivory keys and things like that so there's more more inclination to change ivories if they're slightly not quite right. Sorry, I'm going on to the case now. Interesting here, the piano has been played a reasonable amount, owned by someone who was a band pianist. Um, and uh, But there's no, usually you find lots of wear when the piano has been played quite a lot um, on the desk here, but there isn't much wear at all. And I think he played by ears from what I can gather. Uh, and you can't see any scratches here. Normally you see sheet music scratches when it's a pianist on both sides here. There's a few slight scratches on this side. So if you're trying to assess the piano for us, we do want to know how much work there is to do on the case, obviously. Um, around this side, well, I won't go uh, bother to go around the whole thing very much, except to say uh, that it's pretty perfect. Um, and it's poly black polyester modern finish. Uh, so if it's a wood, wood piano, then very often there's a fade line here. When you lift this back, lift a wood colour piano that you've got, very often there's a fade line there. So if you've got a wood colour piano, just do show us the whole of the top and also highlight any, any deficiencies there might be, any fading, uh, any problems with the polish. It's really important for us to know. Um, it affects the value of the piano a lot, obviously, cosmetics, although we're really interested in the instrument as a, mus as a musician's piano. But... Um, folks buy as well for cosmetic reasons, obviously. Um, looking at the inside here, there's, look, look for moth and the felt. Uh, little flecks, white flecks uh, indicate moth. Um, you can sometimes see holes, obviously. If it's got a lot of moth, then obviously there's a lot of work to do. And the strings themselves, uh, these are slightly discoloured. You can tell the age of the piano. You can tell whether it's been restrung. Uh, if they're very bright coloured strings then uh, that would be restrung but this this is all the original i'm pleased about that because beckstein original strings are excellent um, in this age of beckstein in fact all ages of beckstein um, so that's really important to us so that's looking at the case um, if you can uh, do measurements and things on the piano like we've done then that's very helpful the right hand pedal tells us a lot very often if it's, it's the one that's used the most so if it's very worn and sometimes it dips slightly and that's obviously means the piano's been played a lot in this case, it's very slightly shinier than that one, so it's been used, but not, not excessively. So I forgot to mention, if you do take the front rail off, that's extremely useful, because then you can look at the felts. Uh, it's very, very, very common for pianos to get eat, uh, felts to get eaten by moth, and you'll see it down here. Um, so just looking across, you can see that there's no evidence of moth here. If The evidence is usually little round, very small round balls, balls that... Uh, they've eaten the green felt and they're green balls usually so that's that's one evidence you might even see moth lava carcasses and things and uh, all sorts um, but moth is so common and such a such a problem by the way if you have a piano stool it's wonderful to get uh, images of that too and the piano stool underneath this is unfortunately slightly rickety um, and uh, is an unusual stool for the for the piano as well. We've got a video explaining different piano stools as well. It's rickety this way slightly, but um, it's actual fact um, fixed legs, which is useful. If you can photograph the or video the bottom of the piano stool, it's really helpful too. Here's the assessment you'd have made of this piano, and 
We can send copies of our assessment sheets if you email us, if you find you'd like to use one. Um, obviously, if you go to all this detail, the more detail you go to, the better for us. Um, that's really helpful. Don't want to make the video too long though, so maybe you could send a, uh, if you, sorry, I don't want you to make the video too long, or for us for that matter. So please don't send a hugely long video, but if you can perhaps fill this in and, and uh, send us a copy of it, that would be absolutely wonderful. Um, you can see, well, it's a Bechstein Model N 1964, um, by the way, Be older Becksteins have, sometimes don't have the serial number on the top um, because it's been taken off, but underneath the piano you'll find it. You don't find one on a 1964 piano, but the older Becksteins, which are much more common, you do. So if you can measure legroom, that's important to us. This legroom is 63, 61.5 will be normal for a grand, and so it's slightly greater if you're a tall person. The pedal height is normal, that's 6.5, so you could put small caster cups under and it wouldn't be raising the pedals up too high so seven centimeters would be fine going quite fast because i've made plenty of other videos similar to this you need to lubricate um, the weight the key weighting here is one of the main works we need to do it's so heavy um, the action is really surprisingly heavy and i think if we reface which we will do because it needs that we'll have a look at the hammers in a minute i've done this backwards in a way but i wanted to show you this to say that it would be wonderful if you can feel something like this in but if you can't that's fine well understood. We'd have to ask you more questions um, and probably here uh, get you to play the piano for us and uh, various things and phone you up. But if you could do nowadays, a lot of people will send us audio recordings, which is really useful. Play all the notes from bottom to top. I'll show you that in a second. Not expecting you to have to take the action out, but if you do, um, there's some screws here. Uh, which not, on most actions have screws there and then you've got the front rail to take off and then they can pull the action out but you have to be so careful to make sure all the hammers are down because sometimes if the hammers are sticky they'll be up um, like this and if, you, if your hammer is up, I'll show you a hammer that's up there then uh, if you pull the action out that, the shank's going to break that's really really important uh, so don't recommend that unless you are very brave um, in which case it would be nice to see the hammers but um, if you can see the hammers from above if you if you'd like to just press down at this point um, we can see the hammers from above just about but it's not so good as you can see as as it would be you can try if you don't want to make a video then photographing them would be will be fine but you can't see that much on these hammers from above it's much easier to see when the action's out so if you are brave to do that then that would be wonderful um, but or get a technician to do it for you or get a technician to assess the piano for you that would be even better um, so you can look at any of these aspects here. Uh, obviously, moth and woodworm so important. Checking the whole piano. Um, I haven't actually done the woodwork here. I meant to put this on, but um, the music stand length I haven't measured. Uh, grand pianos have very long music stands, which is wonderful for if you somebody who puts lots of music across. Then uh, that's ideal. Um, so that's the work we're going to have to do on this mainly: reface, voice, reweigh, regulate, clean, buff case and keys and fine tune. So uh, that's the kind of work that we expect to do on a modern piano really. Um, so we're gonna have to, the refacing is the biggest job and voicing afterwards. You have to be careful when you reface to get it exactly right as I've mentioned before. Otherwise you can actually be sounding worse if you reface badly. Um, so I, I'm sure if you're refacing then you know exactly what I mean. And um, so cleaning and buffing the case. So I think I've said everything here. Um, and uh, we'll just listen to the piano now and show you what I'd like you to do if you are trying to assess the piano for us. Uh, looking at the action, the hammers are reasonably worn, as you can see. Um, so that represents a reasonable amount of playing. Um, not, not one hour a day since the piano was made, that kind of thing, but probably an average of about 20 minutes a day since the piano was made in 1964. So you can see the indentation that's made by the strings there, and it's become a bit flat, which means the tone is slightly dulled. So we would reface this and take off, let's say, half a gram, which is going to affect the touch by um, about two grams, three grams. Sorry, I'm not calculating my head very well, but it will affect the touch. It will reduce it. We want to reduce the touch considerably, 63 grams per middle C. We want to bring that down by 10% at least. A 52, 50, 48 even would be, if you want a lightish touch, 48, 52, 55 if you, if you want to work your fingers well. So certainly 10% less and we'll, we'll see what we can manage to achieve. But we could well obviously achieve much lighter if we reweight the keys. Um, so if you're interested in the piano, that's something you can talk to us about. Um, there's not 
any wear here, which is encouraging. If I try and move the hammer sideways, that's something we always look for. And the, the, these rollers aren't terribly worn. They won't need to be replaced, which is something we'd often do, hammer shanks and rollers, as we mentioned before. But these aren't, aren't sufficiently worn. Just need to reface, get more of a, sh more of a pointed shape on these, so less hammers hitting the string. Um, and the regulation, I've just uh, looked at middle C and adjusted the spring, which is the spring adjustment behind here. Um, let's have a look, sorry, that's actually C sharp, but you can see the spring adjustment here, that screw, very useful on Beckstein's, that's very helpful. Steinway's, unless there's some modern Steinway actions have a spring, a screw as well, but um, generally they, they're, they're harder to adjust, or at least take a bit longer, a bit more finicky. Uh, Beckstein's are one of the best, this is a, it's a Renner action, so uh, many pianos have this, this style of action in. Beckstein have chosen a great action, I think. So looking at the inside, it's actually useful for us to have, um, you can see a bit of rust there actually. So it's, I, it's, I think the one reason it's got um, heavy is it's been a slightly damp atmosphere. Uh, the hammer shanks, I didn't show you that uh, there's, they also need lubricating. So, um, as, and the, the, uh, the keys need lubricating. If you push the keys up like this um, and they stay up, then that's, that's going to reduce. So lubrication is going to reduce the weighting maybe by, and also refacing. I think we might come down by over 10%, which would be good. And then we'll adjust it according to taste, really, if you'd like a lighter or heavier action, um, if you're interested in the piano. I recommend the piano tremendously. Uh, this age of Beckstein, I'm so grateful when I get hold of it, um, because it's one of the best pianos, uh, one of the best pianos made, really, of the modern pianos. So let's listen to the tone in the middle. The break point, slightly out of tune there, but a very well disguised. You can't tell too much difference between the, the tone there and very fruity sound. By fruity I mean interesting sounds, not plain, it's got plenty of interest to it. And that's excellent bass for, for a 180 centimetre piano. What I'd like you to do though is play all the white keys one by one, uh, about half a second each, starting at the bottom. And reasonably loud. And so on. And then the black keys in the same way. Reasonably loud, gives us a clear idea of tone. See that one there is quite bright. Well, that's refacing and, uh, oh, sorry, it's voicing. Well, we're going to reface anyway, so uh, that, that'll be sorted out. Well, I mentioned, mentioned with the tuning pins, if you do get them a close up of them, that's helpful because you can see if any have been knocked in at all. It does happen when they go loose. In this case, um, they're just like they were there, and then you slightly looser, I suppose, because the piano's been tuned a bit, and that tends to loosen them off. Um, the environment might loosen them off as well. So I uh, hope that's helpful. I'm going to play the piano myself. I'm not asking you to play the piano uh, unless you really want to, but the, it's really important. Please try and keep the video down to as short as possible because it takes a long time to go through videos. I'd appreciate that. If you want to do a playing at the end, we might actually have to miss it out because we don't have time to listen to it. Uh, so I'm so sorry about that. You can hear the richness there. So thank you very much for listening. I hope that's helpful. Um, and uh, I probably leave some comments at the bottom of things I've forgotten to mention. So that's a Beckstein Model M Grand Piano made in 1964, 180 centimetres long. And I'm so grateful to get this piano into stock. It, at the moment it's quite heavy and uh, also the, the hammers need voicing, but that that's no problem, it'll sound very similar to when it was new. And it's really one of the best modern grand pianos of this length. The hammers are letting it down at the moment.
such a lush pace and tenor area. Out of tune at the moment, of course. Very stable piano. I'm sure when it's tuned, it's going to be extremely stable. And obviously, all pianos you've got to put in a good environment and not too dry, and not not damp as either. This house, I don't think it's been uh, heated properly, and therefore it has absorbed a bit of moisture. And that always means the keys are going to get heavier. The touch is going to feel heavier. And this, our main work really is to try and get this piano feeling like a new piano. You notice I buffed up a couple of these because I was a bit concerned that this was over the polyester, not under it, because some pianos, they have this under the polyester. Actually, um, I shouldn't have worried really because you can feel a slight relief here and indeed they polished up fine. This piano ne never not been polished up, casework not really been uh, cleaned very often. Plenty of power and we'll play very sensitively once we've regulated it and made it like a new piano. So I hope that's helpful. If you're interested in the piano, please let us know. Please write to us info at robertspianos.com. Thank you very much for listening.